Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to our channel that is Best Notes Tutorials. Presently we are dealing with British poet, essayist and antiquarian Charles Lamb. In my first video, first part of Charles Lamb's video, I have talked about who was he and why essay of Elia is famous. Okay, I talked about what is inner temple and why Mary Lamb killed her own mother. All right, not only that, we discussed about Elizabeth Field. All right, and then we were talking about Christ's Hospital Boarding School which is in Horsham, UK. So let's move ahead and let's talk more about the childhood of Charles Lamb. And I'm going to focus on those topics which are extremely important and uh, which are going to come in your examination. I mean to say probable questions we are going to discuss in depth. Okay, so let's begin with today's class which is part 2 of Charles Lamb. Let's begin. Friends, in my last video, I had talked about the life of Charles Lamb. And here, at the end of the video, part 1, I had talked about the brutality of school authority and the members who run the school. There, Charles Lamb had to undergo brutal behavior of the headmaster and the warden as well, along with the nurse. Today we are going to move ahead from here. So let's begin. Years later in his essay, Christ's Hospital 5 and 30 years ago. This is the name of the essay which is written by Charles Lamb. And this is very important because he has included his experience here in this essay. Okay, please keep in mind this is not poetry. This is not a story. This is an essay. And Charles Lamb is well known for writing essay more than poetry and anything else. Okay, so here he talks about the events that happened in his hostel time. He is speaking of himself in the third person as L. Okay, he uses third person L for referring to himself. I hope it's clear. From this one point, you will get two, three questions. First of all, this is the name of the essay. Okay. Name of the essay might be question number one. Number two, what is it? Is it an essay or it is poetry? Then what events he includes in this particular work? Then you have to write, this is the hostel event, hostel experiences of child slam. Okay, number four, number four MCQ might be on who is the speaker. The speaker is L and he has used this uh, L in order to keep a distance. Okay, first person, second person, third person. So in third person, he is narrating this story because he wants to see the situation from a distance. Okay, I hope it's clear. Let's move to the next point now. Christ's Hospital was a typical English boarding school and many students later wrote of the terrible violence they suffered there. I have already told you, Charles Lamb was less suffered because he had some uh, people, known people in the boarding school, but other poets, okay, who later became poets and businessmen and, you know, occupied different uh, positions. They have written the terrible violence. Terrible means which is uncontrollable. Okay. So, who all were there to torture them? Let's find out. The upper master. Upper master means principal or the headmaster. Okay. Head teacher. Of the school from 1778 to 1799 was Reverend James Boyer. Okay, the principal of the school was James Boyer, a man renowned for his unpredictable and capricious temper. Now, you need to understand it very well. See, fortunately, we don't have this kind of situation right now because, because uh, we are studying child psychology uh, more and more. 
okay so we are able to understand what is the requirement of a child to bloom in all the spheres right but here the principle was just for the namesake i can say okay because principal's task is not done by mr boyer all right who was the principal of uh, this school christ's hospital boarding school at that time and he ruled okay he was the authority out there since 1798 to 1799 now what did he do see his mind was unpredictable his mood used to swing sometimes he used to beat students and the very next moment he used to pamper them okay so capricious temper it means a kind of eccentric mad short temperedness you can say okay the person who is not mentally fit okay now what is the reason behind it we don't know particularly but it could be anything maybe he was not happy uh, with his job maybe he had domestic violence okay domestic violence is not related to only women or a feminine category of the society right it could be with men as well now we exact we don't know exactly what was the reason behind this capricious nature of the headmaster we only know that he used to torture the students okay let's move ahead let me tell you one more thing here you have to remember the name of the the name of the principal okay and how long did he rule in this hostel and what was his nature he was mad kind of person who had eccentric mindset okay and nobody could predict his nature next point is in one famous story boyer was said to have knocked one of the lay hands teeth out of out by throwing a copy of homer at him from across the room say this is torture physical torture which was done to a student okay there was lay hunt lay hunt is another poet okay and uh, we read about him in our next to next topic after completing charles lamb all right now see what had happened to lay hunt it was boyer okay boyer is the principal of this school and what did he do he violated okay he did physical torture to lay hunt because he broke one of his teeth by throwing the book of homer okay homer he is the it was there in their syllabus to read homer so with that book he broke the teeth of lay hunt so through this we can understand that the teachers the management was insensitive towards children okay which we don't have right now we are sympathetic because we know that they are new generation of our country okay now whatever we are reading all these are negative images of that is school that teacher that nurse okay we are coming to nurse and other people who tortures tortured the children okay so right now we need to understand that nobody was familiar nobody had amiable or friendly relationship with children nobody thought of nurturing and putting in positivity in these children okay so let's move ahead lamb seemed to have escaped much of his brutality in part because of his amiable personality and in part because samuel salt his father's employer and lamb's sponsor at the school was one of the institutions or institutes governors now see even child sorry charles lamb had to undergo some of the bad experiences but it was not as much as other students it was because there were two reasons number one he was friendly okay friendly to everybody he had a friendly personality and number two was samuel salt who was the father's employer he was there in that school okay and lamb's sponsor at the 
school even lamb's sponsor was institutions governors and that is why people knew charles who charles lamb was okay so because of his acquaintances acquaintances means known person or known connection he was saved by this brutal character brutal nature okay charles lamb had a stutter and this inconquerable impediment in his speech deprived him of gracian status at christ's hospital thus disqualifying him for a clerical career now see uh, from here we need to understand that charles lamb was a stammerer okay he used to stammer stammer means whose speech is not clear okay whose speech is not clear who repeats words okay sometimes words doesn't come out of their mouth so that disability is called stutter or stammering all right now this was inconquerable that means however he tried it was not possible for him to conquer that is overcome it happens that sometimes you know people suffer from some disease and because of practice because of uh, medication because of proper exercise they get cured but here it was not in the case of charles lamb charles lamb because he tried a lot but he could not conquer this disability impediment okay impediment means hindrances or obstacle all right or you can say problem so it was inconquerable problem not solvable problem okay now because of his stammering habit he there was problem in his speech he could not uh, be a well speaker okay a good orator that is why he could not get a clerical job in christ's hospital okay so from here there are so many questions which will be asked okay first of all from here you might be asked that who was the classmate of who was the classmate of charles lamb you have to write lay hunt was one of the other people were also there but if you get in the option you have to write lay hunt okay next what happened to him when he was in the hostel you have to write that his master that is boyer mr boyer okay headmaster boyer broke his teeth by throwing a book next point you have to remember that why did charles lamb escaped brutality you have to write two things that he had friendly personality and number 2 he had connection in the institution okay next what was the problem of charles lamb charles lamb's problem was that he was a stammerer he used to stammer while speaking next what consequences he had to face because of this problem you have to write he had to lose job of a clerk in christ's hospital okay while coleridge and other scholarly boys were able to go on to cambridge lamb left school at 14 and was forced to find a more prosaic career now see st coleridge we know about him he is a poet who belonged to romantic period early romantic period and he was the one to uh, introduce along with the collaboration of uh, william wordsworth lyrical ballads in 1798 right so st coleridge was also his classmate along with lay hunt okay now other other you know uh, his friends went to cambridge for further studies but he could not do that and he had to find some job at the very early age of 14 okay so he didn't have option therefore he had to look for something straightforward career okay straightforward job you can say and uh, he had to do it because of his problem that is stammering problem okay he could not be uh, very creative through his uh, speaking therefore he had to write something okay so what does he do let's see for a short time he worked in the office of joseph pais of 
London merchant and then for 23 weeks until 8 February 1792 held a small post in the examiner's office of the South Sea House. Now see, after a short time he started working in Joseph Pice's work uh, office okay and then he moved to examiner's office which was at South Sea House okay it's a subsequent downfall in a pyramid scheme after Lamb left the South Sea bubble would be contrasted to the company's prosperity in the first area essay now see after some time he lost uh, sorry he left the job okay which is at South Sea House after this the downfall arrived of this company okay and then Elia S's became very famous contrasted to the company's prosperity in the first Elia S's it means that the company which was South Sea House okay examiner's office of the South Sea House it decreased okay it did not progress whereas the publication of Elia essay did very well compared to his earlier job okay you have to remember all these dates and uh, how many weeks uh, he worked where he worked who was the owner all these things you have to understand because mcq is very tricky thing on 5th april 1792 he went to work in the accountant's office for the british english india company the death of his father's employer having ruined the family's fortunes see charles lamb's you know family was dependent upon a father's employer okay but after his death the family suffered a lot and it ruined family's fortune employers having ruined the family's fortune the one who kept Charles Lamb's father as a worker, he had lost his family's fortune and finally even the father of Charles Lamb had to suffer. So he started working at very early age. Charles would continue to work there for 25 years until his retirement with pension. The superannuation, he refers to it the title of one essay. Now, see, you need to understand here a uh, few things. Okay. Uh, let me explain. Uh, pyramid scheme. Okay, downfall in a pyramid scheme. Pyramid scheme means an illicit money making investment scheme. Okay, like gambling. What do we do in gambling? We put, um, you know, all amount, some amount of money. And if we are fortunate, we gain a lot. But if we are having bad luck, then the money will ruin. It will get ruined, right? It will go to some other party. So what had happened here? In the same manner, when he left South Sea Bubbles, okay, its situation dilapidated. Just like gambling, its fortune, its glory became contrast. Okay, that is what it meant to say. You have to remember that it is an illicit money-making investment scheme. Okay, so direct comparison, uh, we can do it with the company's development and the company which he left and uh, that had gone without any progress. Okay, next you have to remember the date, when did he join accountant's office and what was the company's name? Company's name is British East India Company. Okay, now why he had to do it? Because his father's employer had died and then his family's fortune was also ruined. He, there he worked for 25 years and then finally he got retirement and he, start, he started getting his pension as well. And this superannuation is written as a title in one of the essays 
okay so whatever has happened in his life is he has given to the world in the form of his writing so that a person can relate to his struggles and then they can uh, understand they can get motivated from his story as well let's move ahead uh, friends let me tell you one more thing superannuation when we see literal meaning of superannuation it means a retirement benefit fund okay a retirement benefit fund a person gets annuity annuity after their tenure of 60 years in work so that is what it is mentioned here in 1972 while tending to his grandmother mary field in hertfordshire charles lamb fell in love with a young woman named anne simmons although no epistolary record exists of the relationship between the two Lamb seems to have spent years wooing her. Now, there are so many points in these two um, points only. Okay, so let me tell you. His grandmother's name was Mary Field, who stayed at Herefordshire. And there he fell in love with Anne Simmons. Okay, Anne Simmons. But there is no epistolary. Epistolary means... Uh, letter through letter okay he did not write any love letter to this lady or any kind of uh, information about Anne Simons in his letter we get and uh, we can keep it as a proof there is no proof of that it is just uh, it could be a hearsay but that is also not acceptable because um, the the people who knew grandmother and who knew the people around her okay they could understand that there was Anne Simons who was loved by Charles Lamb so exactly or bluntly we cannot deny the fact that Charles Lamb fell in love with this woman but there is no documentation of that that is what I want to say okay but till his uh, till many years he started wooing her wooing means tried to convince that lady try to uh, you know persuade that lady for uh, being in a relationship okay the record of the love exists in several accounts of lamb's writing now one thing you need to understand that there is no particular record uh, of relationship between charles lamb and and simon it was one-sided love okay charles lamb loved and simon's from her uh, from his end so, we can see mention of Anne Simons in different indirect ways in his writing. Okay, but practically he did not, he did not get love or attention of Anne. Let's move ahead. Let's move to the next point. Rosamond Gray is a story of a young man named Alan Clare. Who loves Rosamond Grey but their relationships their relationship comes to nothing because of her sudden death now see in the work Rosamond Grey he talks about Anne Simons okay there he has kept Alan Clare as protagonist but their love is not accomplished because of sudden death of the heroine of the story all right so you might get question that whom does he refer in the story rosamond gray you have to write it is anne simons okay anne simons whose love he wanted desperately but she was not interested in him miss simons also appeared in several alia essays under the name alice m okay so here the hero young man's name is Alan Clare and the lady's name is Alice M. By Alice M he means to refer Miss Simons. The essays Dream Children, New Year's Eve and several others speak of the many years that Lamb spent pursuing his love that ultimately failed. 
Miss Simons eventually went on to marry a silversmith and Lamb called the failure of the affair his in his great disappointment. Okay? So here we need to understand that after falling in love with Anne Simons, he had become very much passionate and through his writings we are able to understand about Miss and Simons. Okay. It is said that when you are loved by some poet, then you live eternally. So that is what happened to Miss Simon as well. Charles Lamb loved her and now we get to understand that she was there in his life. Okay. Though from one side, that is Charles Lamb. She did not ever accept his love, but her mention is there in each and every, almost every work of Charles Lamb. Okay, be it Dream Children, New Year's Eve and several others. But it was an unsuccessful love. It was because Anne Smith, sorry, Miss Anne Simons married Silver Smith. Okay, Silver Smith uh, was by his profession. His name is not mentioned here. And therefore, Lamb called this incident to be, you know, great disappointment. Okay, so in love life, he was not lucky, it seems. So by this, we will complete today's video. That is part two. In our next part, we are going to deal with family tragedy of uh, Charles Lamb, which is very much important because it talks about uh, his sister's mental health also, their childhood, okay, how Mary Lamb killed uh, her own mother, etc. So, this is going to be very important. I'm putting a asterisk mark here. So, uh, friends, please be there with me in my next video as well. Till then, if I have made some points clear to you all, then I hope I will get a like and a comment and it will be shared with your friends. Those who are studious and those who are very much interested in cracking net and other examinations. Thank you friends. We will meet in our next video. Take care and all the best.